There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord there's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence i've tasted and seen at the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory lord is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord your presence lord to come more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Lord. holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory god is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence lord good morning Welcome to worship today. Glad you're here. Um, more of you than I thought there would be. So thank you for coming. Um, welcome to the folks at home. Glad that you're joining us as well. Um, I have just a couple things for you as we get started. Uh, we will have coffee hour after worship this morning. Um, just give me a few minutes to get there and, and I will join you online. Um, our annual meeting is next Sunday. So please plan on joining us for that either here in the sanctuary or um, online and the flowers on the altar were given in celebration of Myrna Nyquist as you know 
uh, we had his celebration of life here on Friday, and so those were from the funeral. Um, and our prayers continue to be with the Nyquist family. Please stand as you're able, and we'll sing our gathering hymn. So wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know. A glorious, a glorious love you are. Beautiful one, you beautiful one, I adore, beautiful one, my soul must sing. Powerful, so powerful, your glory fills the skies, your mighty works displayed for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. Beautiful one I love, you beautiful one I adore. Beautiful one my soul must sing. Beautiful one, I adore, beautiful one, my soul must sing. You opened my eyes to your wondrous one, you captured my heart with this love, because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. You opened my eyes to your wonders anew. You captured my heart with this love. Because nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Beautiful one I love. Beautiful one I adore. Beautiful one my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. Beautiful one, my soul must sing. How precious is the steadfast love of God. All, All people, people may, may take, take refuge, refuge in the shadow of, of God's embrace. embrace. Christ is the foundation of life. In Christ, In Christ we, we behold, behold the light of God. In the light of Christ, we see the darkness of our world and of our hearts. Trusting in God's saving love, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have been, been led astray by the idols of our world. world. We, we have, have depended on our possessions and have not placed our trust in your grace. We have carelessly consumed the gifts you offer and have failed to be faithful stewards of the earth's resources. We have sought security in the might of the sword rather than the strength of your spirit. Forgive us, we pray. Lead us to true repentance that we may serve you faithfully through Christ, Christ we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. 
Hear the good news. Christ unmasks the idols of our world and frees us from slavery to all that would oppress us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. blessing you showed, showed forth your, your glory and, and led many, many to faith, faith by the works, works of your son who brought gladness and salvation to his people transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him jesus christ our savior and lord amen the peace of christ be with you always and also with you please be seated The first reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 62. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty and in the hand of the Lord and the royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. 
but you shall be called my delight is, is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsive with me, Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O God. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feed on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the foundation of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. gospel is from the second chapter of John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the wine that had, the water that had become wine, and did not, did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone, who, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> One of my all time favorite movies is Dirty Dancing. This is a coming-of-age movie, you probably know it. it, came out in 1987. Um, I was in high school at the time. And the story takes place in the summer of 1963. And the main character is Frances Hausman, who's also known as Baby. And she and her family are at the Kellerman's Family Resort. 
And over the, the course of the film, Baby learns a very powerful lesson, a very painful lesson, that things are not always as they seem, and life is not as simple as she was told that it was. Well, in the final scene, if you've seen it, this, the final scene is really remarkable, and there is this huge farewell party for all the guests at the resort. And Johnny, who was a recent, recently fired dance instructor, he shows up unexpectedly, and he sees Baby sitting there in the corner with her parents. And he walks up to the table, and he says one of the, the most iconic lines from modern movies. And he says, no one, nobody puts baby in the corner. And as they dance the final dance together, we find out that they have had the time of their life, and it is a dramatic and emotionally charged moment. And in my opinion, it is one of the best endings in movie history. Well, when I read the story of the wedding at Cana, I am reminded of that final scene from the movie. And with all the drama and all the emotion that comes with it. First century weddings were all-encompassing celebrations. Everyone in the village was invited. Everyone attended. It was something that was not to be missed. Both Jesus and his disciples were invited and were present. This happens very early on in the ministry of Jesus. In fact, in the Gospel of John, he really hasn't done anything yet except to call a couple of disciples. And nobody knows who he is except for his mother. He's simply there to celebrate the couple and to have a good time. Well, we might say that Mary puts Jesus in a corner. And we can all empathize with Jesus in this story. We know what it's like to be embarrassed by our mothers, to be put on the spot. Mom might say to her friends who have stopped by, you know, my child has been working on this piece of music or on this dance routine. Why don't you perform for us, child? Or maybe that never bothered you, but I hated it when my mother did it to me. I hated being put in a corner like that. And Jesus doesn't seem any too pleased either. His mother says that they are out of wine. And Jesus says, why are you telling me? It's not my problem. But just to wedge him in a little bit more, to put him into that corner, Mary says to the servants right in front of him, do whatever he tells you. So now what? Well, he's pinched. Can you see his eyes rolling? I do. I feel you, Jesus. I feel your pain, man. I've been there. Now, you may be wondering, why is this such a big deal? Why is it such a big deal that they ran out of wine? Well, let me assure you, it mattered greatly. Weddings were this huge social event. And as I said, everyone in town came, plus out of town, close friends and relatives, everybody was there. And it was a week-long celebration. Weddings provided a vacation from work and respite from suffering and poverty and the tyranny of Rome. It was an excuse to get your mind off your troubles for a few days. And the wine, of course, certainly helped with that. John tells us it was the third day of celebrating. So they're already halfway in. And to run out of wine at this point would have been socially devastating. They would have been the talk of the town for years. Do you remember so-and-so's wedding when they ran out of wine? It was such a terrible thing. But it's more than just the social aspect because it's running out of wine wasn't necessarily about the wine itself. It was about what the wine represents which is God's favor and God's blessing, which is exactly what you want at a wedding. When the wine is plentiful, so also it was thought was the blessing. But if there was not enough, then it was thought there was no blessing of God on this couple and that they may, must not have been in God's favor. 
But let's know no one wants to start out their married life like that. No one puts Jesus in the corner, except maybe his mom. So he steps up with gentle coaxing from his mama, and he gets to work, and he tells the servants, fill these jars with water. Now, there were six of them, 20 or 30 gallons apiece, and these jars would have been used for the ritual washing that they had to do prior to going to the temple. If each jar was 20 gallons, then that means about 600 bottles of wine, as we measure wine today. If they, each jar was closer to 30, then we're talking 900 bottles of wine. Almost 1,000 bottles of wine is an extraordinary amount, and certainly far more than the guests could have consumed in the remaining three or four days of the celebrations. Well, the servants dip some out and they take it to the host, the master of ceremony, who is astounded at the quality of this very good wine. It was common practice to serve the good stuff first and then the lesser quality later on when the guests couldn't tell one way or the other. But these people waited until they tell the middle, midpoint, almost the end, to serve the best wine. So not only does Jesus make a ton of it, far more than they will ever be able to consume, he has also made the best wine that anyone has ever tasted. Well, isn't that exactly how God works? Isn't it amazing how God often saves the best for last? The story of the wedding at Cana reminds us that God is the one who offers blessing upon blessing and grace upon grace, just like a waterfall. God is the source of abundance. God is the source of life. No one puts Jesus in the corner. Or if he is cornered, he doesn't stay there for very long. When this happened to him at the wedding, he burst out and he did not disappoint. By changing the water into wine, Jesus gives us a sign. And he's telling us that in him is life and joy and salvation. And all of those things have arrived and are now right in front of those people. What that means for us is that when life happens and when we have challenges and so forth, we know that Christ is with us, and not just a little bit or a little bit that might run out someday, but we know that that life and that joy and that sal salvation have come to us in abundance, so much so that we will never be able to use it up. And obviously, just because we have this abundant life in Christ does not mean that our lives are going to be perfect or easy. What it does mean, though, is that when life happens, when we do have those challenges with job or health or family or relationships or COVID or whatever it might be, we trust that God enters into those challenges with us. God fills those challenges with God's presence. And through that promise, we find hope and strength to get through that season. And we trust that because we are joined to the source of real and abundant life. When our own lives feel like they are falling apart, we trust that we are joined to the source of life that matters. We are joined to a rich and full life that is so great, not even death can destroy it. The wedding at Cana is meant to give us a glimpse of what the kingdom of God is like. It is like a village wedding celebration. Everyone is invited. Everyone is welcome. Everyone comes to the party. All the guests are surprised by the abundance of good wine. And no one is ever pushed into a corner. The wedding at Cana tells us that the fun 
has arrived and that Jesus is the abundant life at that party. Amen. trumpet sound the angels sing the feast is ready to begin the gates of heaven are open wide and jesus welcomes you inside sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight come and dwell in heaven's love and light take your place at the table of the king the feast is ready to begin the feast is ready to begin tables are laden with good things oh taste the peace and joy he brings he'll fill you up with love divine he'll turn your water into wine sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. Come, 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 satisfies. Offers the poor his paradise. Now hear all heaven and earth applaud the amazing goodness of the Lord. Sing with thankfulness songs of pure delight. Come and revel in heaven's love and light. Take your place at the table of the king. The feast is ready to begin. The feast is ready to begin. Please stand as you are able. We are God's people by baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the ways that we can continue to gather to be connected to one another and to you, whether we are in person or across, um, across the internet. We're grateful to have this technology, Lord, that allows us to worship you together. Thank you for the story of the wedding at Cana and how it illustrates the abundance of your love and your grace. That grace comes to us, grace upon grace, just like a waterfall. And we're so grateful, Lord, to trust that you walk with us every day and in every way. Strengthen us for this journey, Lord God, and help us to share your love and light in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world. We ask, Lord, that you bless every faithful heart who gathers in your name. And we ask, Lord, that you help us to work together, that we can share the abundance of your grace with all we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for the nations of the world, 
particularly places that are living with unrest or fear or in injustice of any kind. Strengthen the faithful in all those places, Lord, and help us to work for justice, fairness, and equity for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation. Once again, our nation has been rocked with violence and um, and just senseless violence. I don't understand why these things keep happening. But we pray for our brothers and sisters in Texas <clears throat> who were terrorized yesterday by a gunman who went into a synagogue and held the rabbi and several parishioners hostage for hours. We pray, Lord, for that man. We pray that you have mercy on his soul. We pray for those who have been terrorized especially as especially for the rabbi who he himself was terrorized and now he must care for his people who are hurting surround them lord with your presence and your peace and we pray lord that we can find a better way to resolve our differences rather than resorting to violence we pray for your peace to reign in this country surround those who are suffering today whether they are victims of wildfires or hurricanes or tornadoes or violence or something else. Just be present to them and show up in a big way and assure them of your love and acceptance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the sad, and the lonely. We pray for those who are grieving, especially the Nyquist family. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who do not know you that they would come to know of your mercy and your grace. Hear now the names we lift before you who are in special need of your loving care, whether you speak those, we speak those names out loud or from within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for the ways you continue to bless us at St. Andrews. Thank you for using us to be a powerful force and witness in this neighborhood. Please bless our finances and our resources and help us to be good stewards of all that you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you will hear and answer these prayers that we lift to you in the mighty and amazing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought forth life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you and thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. God, who leads you in paths of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forevermore. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our sending hymn.
songs of thankfulness and praise. Jesus, Lord, to Thee we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar. Branch of royal David's stem, in thy birth at Bethlehem, anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Manifest at Jordan's steam, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and at Cana wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest, manifest in power divine, changing water into wine, anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Manifest in making whole, weakened body, fainting soul. Manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might. Manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in flesh made manifest. Grant us grace to thee, the Lord, present in thy holy word. Grace to imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou that we might become like thee at thy great epiphany and may praise thee ever blessed god in flesh made manifest at the wedding feast at cana you gladdened the guest with divine generosity filled to the brim and flowing over. May the, May the Spirit's, Spirit's love, flowing, flowing like, like the water across the face of the earth, fill us with every gift for the goodness of the, of the world. May we delight in serving you and our neighbors this day and always. Send, Send us, us forth with joy, O God, God, in all that we say and all, and all that we do. Help us to be reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God. to the sky your righteousness is like the mighty mountain your 
justice flows like the ocean's tide. Would lift my voice to worship you, my King. I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. With my mind off to worship you, my King. I will find my voice in the shadow of your wings. Your love, O oh Lord, Reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness stretches to the sky.